G'day guys, Project Tinny build coming at you really, really, really slowly. <laughs> I always laugh when I see other people upgrading cars or upgrading tinnies or whatever, their fishing stuff, and you're just like, how can it take so long? That would kill me. I would just want it built and finished and done. And then here I am. This has been close to six months now of me procrastinating and just basically not having enough time to carry on with it. But here we are, I went to the wiring section now. So I'll run you through how all that works and we'll have a look at it. And if you mess up that timing, any space is where I'm talking about. Swim bait cod. Hey guys, before we jump into the electrical side of it, a few things that have changed from my, probably the project one video. If you haven't seen part one of this project video, card should be up there somewhere maybe. <laughs> you can click on that and watch that. Um, but things that have changed, so the piano hinges that I was initially running, um, Obviously didn't choose the best quality stainless or it's the fact that we cut them, whatever it was. Um, they've already started to rust. I've taken the boat out twice, even though it's not finished, uh, just because I needed to go fishing. And so I'm going to do away with them. I'm going to run the single stainless, really solid cabin hinges. So there'll be two of them on each compartment. I've already done the, the middle section compartment and it, it fits well, lifts well, seems really strong. and. Again, it's been, I've had it out in the weather and taken it fishing. No corrosion. So I think I'll stick with them. So the compartment latches. So I've finally decided on what I'm going to run with those. I'm going to run the plastic flush. So I'm going to run the plastic flush. <coughs> so I'm going to run the plastic flush, the full latch. So obviously, as the name states, it sits flush. So once the flooring, everything's done. You're not going to kick anything. You're not going to catch rods on anything. It's just... I want this boat to be simple and clean, so these are these are tying perfectly with that. All right, so let's jump into the electrical. I'll show you what I've done so far. So if you remember from part one, I mounted a panel so that we could mount the switch panel. So spare outlet, in case you want to charge anything, nav lights, aerator, depth sounder. All convenient up front. Mounted some lights on the outside, obviously. They're pretty flush and I'd be hard pressed to hit anything with them, so I really like that idea. And they're also not on the top side of the deck, so they're not in your in your face if you want to leave mom while you're fishing at night. So both my sanders are gonna be mounted on ram mounts. They're the ram mounts that I had uh, initially running in my old boat. I pulled them out for so I changed the mounting system. So there'll be one up the front and then one obviously down the driver's section. So running the taller ram mount, I think, I'm not sure if it's the longest uh, leg section that you can get, but it's pretty long. Uh, originally I was using this out of convenience because I already had it, but it sets up perfect for when you're sitting here driving along. This, the sounder is exactly where I need to be able to see it. So I can even twist it more and put it more in front of me. And then when you, when you want to start fishing or whatever, you can lean it back and it's completely out of your way, out of the deck space. Um, you can even have it facing the front if you want. I just like the convenience of having this on the ram mount at my eye level. I'm not the shortest person. So it's, um, yeah, perfect setup having it like that. Both the ram mounts have been screwed directly into the floor, but not just into that top plate, even though that top plate's like three mil alloy, whatever it is, it's not gonna go through it. But I made sure I picked up some of those cross members you, you remember from when we built the, before we put this on, those square sections that run through there. So I made sure I picked up at least two of them for each of those bolt holes and like, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> I like to run all my cabling either through those channels up there or up underneath this top rail channel up here at the front of the boat. That way everything is out of the way, nice and clean. So I picked up some little stick-on cable tie holders and actually flexible so they curve 
inside that thing and they stick on really well. So that the 3-in-1 active imaging transducer, just a very basic install. You just, um, just screwed straight through to the back of the boat, silicon it up so it doesn't leak. The battery box is probably a little bit different to what I thought about putting in initially. I've got a switch on the top. That switch is going to run my bilge pump that's down there. So it'll basically always be connected. The power that runs to the front and the trolley motor power. I was going to hardwire them in there because there's plugs up the front, but now I'm going to Anderson plug them both back here. So you should be able to click in, click in. This one will run neatly along the back, on the back section of the boat. But that way when I'm finished fishing and I'm putting the boat away, I can just disconnect both of them and I don't have to worry about any voltage being on any of the wiring going at the front. A, you're not going to risk the chance of a fire and B, you're not going to risk running the battery flat for no reason. So the live oil pumps in, the wiring is going to be run all out to the front to that switch panel. I've got it plumbed in in the back here, next to the bungs. I still have to plumb in the drain for it. So that's the, the overflow for my live well. I've still got to plumb that in yet, which I'm a bit nervous about putting putting this big thing into the back of the boat, but you gotta do what you gotta do. If I seal it all, it might be a problem. And hiding down there in the bottom, as we mentioned before, is the bilge pump, which will be permanently wired in the box to the switch. Uh, I already know that this bilge pump works really well because I happened to left the bungs out the other day when I went for a fish. So very grateful that I put that in. So again with that bilge pump, it'll be wired into the box so it's permanently wired just with that switch. But the hosing very neatly and no risk of damage snuck up there and then squirts out up the top. And as I said, works brilliantly, luckily. <laughs> Troll motor has an Anderson plug up the front as well. And the reason for that is if I ever want to take it off quickly, I can just unplug it. There's no dramas. What I am thinking of doing is mounting this light up under here. If I can get it in there. Mounting this light up under my trolling motor. Just so if I'm in, coming home late for me, jack fishing or whatever, I can flick a switch and see where I'm going. So I'll let you know how that goes. So from my Instagram or Facebook, you would have seen I'm running the Durasafe lock system on the sounder. So it's the key to lock, so you've got one lock on your ram mount and one lock on your sounder unit itself. So basically you need really good tools or some sort of grinder or something to be able to steal that sounder off there. So you probably would have seen on one of my other videos that I did linking the Elite TIs and I was going to run the Lawrence Elite TIs on this boat with the two set up just because of simplicity with how the units link and not having to have a transistor on my, on my trolling motor, etc. But... There is something exciting coming. Well, I'm excited about it anyway. And all I can basically say is I won't be running the Elites because of this. And you will be pretty excited to see the setup that is going to go on this boat. Hopefully, guys, I'm not as slow with the, with the updates videos on the boat. Um, we, uh, next week, I have some Japanese anglers. We're going to Lake Awonga to some Barramundi. So I've got that week and a half out. I've got some Simrad filming to do in the Gold Coast the week after that, and then do have Christmas. But uh, in saying that, there's a couple of exciting, really exciting things coming for the boat that I'm looking forward to, and hopefully very soon I'll be able to show you how I'm doing the floor and how easy it was to get this floor mapped out. And once you see the finished product of that, you'll be really impressed. So stay tuned, guys. I'll keep you up to date. Uh, if you don't already follow my Instagram, follow my Instagram account because I, I do the little stages of things that are changing. So thanks again guys for following along and stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>